it's there. Right, I will kick you off then, just a second. Yeah, thank you. It says you're now live. Okay, so yes, just a reminder to everybody, this is being live streamed. So it will be available to uh, anybody who chooses to join it on YouTube, is it now or whatever, or see it on YouTube later, however they would. Um, okay, uh, I think we're missing Jeff. I didn't hear a, any apology from Jeff, but otherwise, let's get going. Graham, do you want to share the, the, the first slides okay. and then we'll we'll get going? OK. Yeah. Oh, Alvin's put his hand up. What, Alvin? No. Oh, sorry. No, it's um, I'm having fiddly problems with being on the phone. Oh, right. OK. <laughs> OK, thanks for joining anyway. Sorry, um, Colin, and, and myself. I just wanted to check Michael Brossard is with us. He was in that Teams meeting with me and Rory about two seconds ago. Oh, OK, yes. And he's, Michael... he said he was going to transfer over, and I can't see him on the screen. No, I can't either. So I'm okay. not sure if he's having problems at this point. Right. Um, I don't know. Why this... do you carry on? I'll see if I can track him down. Thank you, Derek. OK, let, let's let's get going. Otherwise, we're going to run out of time. And uh, I think looking at the slide set that's come through, we've got quite a lot to get through. So thank you, everyone, for joining um, our, our meeting today. Um, and uh, um, we we move. Can you put it on full screen, Graham? Yeah, trying to. Oh, OK. <laughs> Technology. Oh, there we go. Brilliant. <laughs> Let's just move to the next meet. Next slide, please. And then we introduce some uh, uh, some changes to the uh, um, to the group. So first of all, I would like to welcome uh, Nicholas, or is Nick Nick? Is it Nicholas or Nick? I can't remember. <laughs> You're on mute, Nicholas. I can't hear you. <laughs> Yes, all right. I've had my screen completely changed in the last few moments, yeah. which is a bit a bit alarming, but never mind. Um, yeah. Yes, uh, Nick or Nicholas is OK. Right. OK, well, welcome to the Access Forum. So people will remember that Nick joined us last time with some proposals about new rights of way. And uh, since then, he has formally joined the Access Forum. So so welcome to that. Okay. We, we've also got uh, a guest which is Rory, uh, Rory Kerr from uh, the Crown Estate. Thank, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you for giving up some of your evening. Um, we, we do appreciate it. So uh, I think uh, we, we contacted Richard Everett, who's the chief forester for the Crown yep. Estate. Uh, and he was very enthusiastic about somebody from the Crown Estate team joining meetings when they can. Uh, and today Rory's got the pleasure of being with us. And we've got a slide later on where we thought we would just talk through some of the Crown Estate things that are going on. And perhaps you could say a little bit at that point about yeah, uh, yeah. what you're doing, if that's OK. Yeah, no problem. Um, so we've had apologies from Jenny and from David. Uh, and unfortunately, we've also had uh, one person leave the forum. It's uh, Jane Rimmer has has, has left us. So uh, otherwise, we're still in uh, reasonable numbers. If anybody knows of anybody who might want to join, then uh, yeah, we uh, we could probably do with a few more people, uh, particularly those who are uh, uh, might represent people with uh, accessibility issues. It would be really helpful. Uh, good, good. OK, um, so just uh, moving on, Oops. where are we? Um, minutes of the last meeting, and I'd say thank you to Joanne for, uh, Joanne for producing the minutes. Uh, we, as we've done recently, uh, we put a summary of progress on the actions in Appendix 1 of the meeting uh, documentation so we don't spend half the meeting going through the last minutes uh i hope you found it i hope you've had a look at it yes uh, 
which is, is helpful. Um, many of the actions have either been completed or completed and we will have an update within the meeting. So uh, uh, I was quite pleased to see how far we'd got with that. Um, there was one action that I was going to ask um, Jeff about, but I don't think Jeff's joined us. So we'll, if he joins us later, we'll we'll ask him about that. That was about the Three Castles path going over the railway bridge at um, on Swinley Road, is it? Uh, the Swinley Road railway bridge. So you get getting between Englemere Pond and uh, uh, Swinley Park. Uh, there's one action on there that I was just wanted to particularly highlight, which is number 224, where the action was for Graham and I to uh, discuss setting up a subgroup to discuss planning matters. Um, so back in the summer, Graham and I did discuss the subgroup and various things got in the way and we haven't actually activated the subgroup. So uh, I think I'd like an action down for us to Rest that to actually having the subgroup meeting. Is that okay, Graham? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So definitely. We did start it, but there are some, uh, some things got in the way at that point. Um, does anybody have any particular questions about the other actions yeah. on that list? I'll take silence as no. <laughs> Does anybody have any comments, corrections, issues with the minutes? Take silence as no. So good, we can move on from last meeting pretty quickly. <clears throat> so uh, moving on to item four, which is uh, rights of way improvements and issues. And... Um, Rob, you've got uh, the opportunity to tell us about quite a few of things that you've been busy with. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I was just going to run th quickly through some uh, recent uh, improvement works um, in and around the rights of way, um, starting with here, um, this being Winkfield Footpath 6, um, where we have uh, rectified a flooding mm -hmm. issue. As you can see, the picture on the left is a picture from this summer. Um, so it was obviously significant um, issues being you know, quite a dry summer. Um, and then uh, the recent kind of boardwalk uh, little bridge crossing that we've put in to um, keep that accessible around that gate area where it is obviously impassable. Um, and if you can move on to the next one. Um, and so the next one, this is highlighting Sandhurst footpath 14, um, which also runs through Wildmoor or part of Wildmoor Heath. Um, as you can see on the picture on the left, um, the before picture compared to the picture on the right, the after picture, um, having gained consent for works on the triple SI from Natural England, um, we were able to um, hopefully rectify um, this muddy seasonal um, issue along this section of um, public footpath where we have now compacted 200 meters worth of stone. Um, so I'm hoping that that's gonna keep that um, as year round access now where it was previously, um, frankly, impassable without very sturdy wellies. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's a really good one because I've, I've certainly got my feet wet there before. <laughs> yeah, and it links nicely to previous projects that we would have highlighted through this forum um, in terms of improving the boardwalk um, and other sections of the public rights of way network that run through the Heathland. So um, hopefully it's kind of uh, linking paths together and kind of allowing access kind of through, through that section of the SPA uh, much better than it has been historically. Yeah. Good. Move on to the next one, please. Uh, so this is a very recent project that we've been working on on a flooded or seasonally flooded certainly a uh, little section of footpath uh, warfield seven um where we've had previously had that kind of just a little bit of plank or something like that down on the ground there kind of tiptoeing across the kind of flooded section um and we've now done away with that and put in the kind of fancy new much more accessible boardwalk as you can see on the picture on the right 
Um, the funding of which has come through um, generously um, by the Southeast Barks Ramblers Group um, and the boardwalk was installed by our excellent local conservation volunteers. Um, the path itself is also becoming increasingly more important. Um, it's part of the Ramblers route, but it also forms a really nice link from the newer Sangs open spaces of Frost Folly and Windmill Farm. Are you seeing a lot more traffic on it now? I mean, it was uh, since I've been back a couple of times to put those kind of grip strips on and things like that, which weren't on there from the original build. Um, I've certainly had several people walking past. I, I don't I haven't received any comments, but right. <laughs> but yeah. um, I, I know. I mean, it's like I say it's part of the Ramblers route. It forms a really nice um, link between those open spaces where you don't have to walk down the side of the um, sort of more main roads. Um, the sort yeah. of country lanes which don't have footpaths to the side of them so um yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a much better improvement. it's a path that will come into its own when the sangs get opened up yeah yeah exactly as more yes. and more come online it's it's yeah. a much it becomes a much more uh, valuable link from one of those to the next and we do want to be opening out and linking sangs together because frankly that's the whole part of the sangs existence um is to promote and provide um you know walking routes for people yeah so uh, whilst this is was the worst part of the path that flooded in at times in winter it does flood further back but uh, not anything like as much as this bit so uh, you may, it, it will become impassable as and when the uh, the cut overflows but, i think uh, that's plan b and yeah at, I mean, some rural paths in the depths of winter, um, unfortunately, do become, you know, do obviously have increased problems, but for much shorter spaces of time. Whereas this section here, once it got wet, it stayed wet for months. Yeah, yeah. that's a good job done. Thank you. Um, so next, please. Um, so here's a sort of example of an improvement of a much more urban, <laughs> excuse me. Um, footpath, um, part of Sandhurst or Sandhurst footpath 15, um, which links um, Branscombe Hill Road to College Road um, and is, as you can see, a very narrow section of footpath, but provides a very useful link for school children and people accessing local shops <coughs> over what was otherwise a very natural um, section. Excuse me. Uh, is it wide enough for prams to get along? <laughs> it's as wide. It's it's as wide as it can be. Um, so it's <laughs> only about one point two meters at most. Huh? Um, oh, a single oh, push chair, probably. <laughs> yeah, there's not much scope for widening it. Yeah, no, it's good. you've done a grand job if you've managed to make it look like that. Well done. Yeah, yeah. it'll encourage usage. I'm sure. That's good. Okay, um, and I think that's probably it for me. But yes. Well, before you go off your, your bit, Rob, I just yeah. wanted to uh, highlight um, your work on Winkfield Footpath Ten, where you replaced a bridge. Oh yes. Uh, as it came onto Braziers Lane, and I, I just wanted to say thank you to the, uh, <coughs> this forum of the committee because I I reported you to it to you at ten o'clock in the morning that it had uh, got a big hole in the middle of the uh, the sleepers and. Would, it was a bit dangerous and you sent me an email about three o'clock in the afternoon with the whole bridge replaced and i can't ask for better service from the council so <laughs> th thank you for that <laughs> yeah absolutely no problem um obviously with most of our works we can prioritize you know health and safety issues kind of higher than kind of general site management um mm -hmm. and i had the opportunity the in the afternoon to kind of see what I could do. So, yeah, thank yeah, you. Sir. Much appreciated. OK, let's move on to the next one, which was where I think where we were going to uh, introduce Rory and his role. So, so Rory, um, I don't know how much you really know about the forum, but we do call ourselves the local countryside access forum. Um, the official titles from this, the legislation is local access forums, but we, we uh, where it looks particularly at, at rights of way, public rights of way, but because in Bracknell Forest area, so much of the countryside access is either through the suitable alternative natural green spaces or the Crown Estate land, 
we have in the past really appreciated having somebody from the Crown Estate to discuss things. And um, my mind has gone a blank as to the previous participant who, who did it. I can't remember his name now. Um, Is it John Deacon? John yeah. Deacon, that was it. Yes, he went no, off yeah, to the Trust before. or somewhere, didn't he? It, yeah, yeah, he's gone up to high, dizzying heights of. Uh, I think he's in charge of all countryside for the National Trust or right. something along that line. Well, he 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 attended our meetings uh, probably about at least fifty percent of the meetings, and it, it was it was an opportunity to discuss access issues. Uh, you know, we we discussed uh, challenges on the, for instance, on the Devil's Highway out of Crowthorn uh, and and various other ones. Um, and this invitation to come for somebody to come back again particularly came up um, when uh, we had some questions around what was happening around Whitmore Bog and access. So I would like to just discuss that in a moment. But uh, perhaps just as a starting point, could you just introduce yourself and your role? Yeah. So uh, my name is Rory. I'm one of the, uh, the wardens uh, for the Crown Estate. Uh, my particular area is forestry, so I look after the eight and a half thousand acres uh, of forest across the Windsor Estate. Uh, our primary role is uh, sort of patrol and response, I guess. Mm. Um, we're normally the first ones to uh, deal with most things. Uh, we're the ones you see most often covering 365 days a year mm. um, and dealing with any issues, uh, uh, dealing with public inquiries. Uh, so. Uh, if you call up, generally they'll send us to get a feel for what's what's the issue is or what the requirement is, and then we can sort of go from there and push to different departments. So, uh, uh, yeah, pretty much. Well, that's good. Well, well, thank you for giving up uh, your time in the evening. Um, I guess from Bracknell Forest's point of view, there's three areas of Crown Estate land. There's Swinley Forest, uh, there's Swinley Park, and there's Whitmore Bog. I think those are the three ones that, primarily overlap although I did notice the other day there's a tiny but, tiny bit of Windsor Great Park that is within Bracknell Forest area <laughs> there's Buttersteep as well oh, I was going to say yeah you've got yeah, Buttersteep uh, but, in, the, yeah. in the middle of it all yes sorry I've forgotten about Buttersteep thank you for that Richard yeah so th w there is an awful lot of area which uh, most of which has has public access um, and yep. I guess you you basically spend much of your time dealing with public access issues, do you? Uh, yeah, to an extent. Um, so we'll, as I say, we get we get called to everything. So chances are, if you've if you've called the Crown Estate as a member of the public, uh, mm -hmm. it'll be a warden that attends right. uh, and takes the initial inquiry, or you'll speak to us over the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we can't, uh, so we try to like basically triage the issue right. uh, if it's something that we can't deal with as uh, as an individual then we'll speak to the relevant departments right. and we'll, we'll get it done that way um right. but across bracknell forest i think there isn't any private areas uh only bag like a corner a little bit of rapley farm and bagshot park on yeah. the uh, eastern side of swinley forest but yeah. uh predominant oh and the two golf courses but obviously yes. they're yes. Uh, they're managed by something else yeah um but yeah, essentially. Yeah. yeah, but the vast majority of it has public access, uh, and it's something that certainly during the, the COVID period, I, I know an awful lot of people in Bracknell, Bracknell Forest area, discovered uh, the access and the, the, the value of the land. So uh, uh, we do appreciate it. Uh, I mean, one of the things I guess we would like is if you do have any issues that relate to access that uh, are worth bringing to the forum uh, we would be very uh, happy to discuss them uh, so that was something that we would uh, like you to think about whether there's things that you want to uh, ask about whether it gets uh, any comments from, uh, from from this group that would that would help um, but then there was one specific one which I was just trying to understand uh, about, uh, I'm going to say, six to nine months ago, we had some representations from the public about the new fence that went in along the side of uh, 
uh, Whitmore Bog, which was replacing the previous fence, which uh, we, we, we clarified that that fencing replacement was entirely uh, appropriate as something that uh, Brackwell Forest Council had a re responsibility to do as part of some previous agreement. Um, what we were just wondering was, does the Crown Estate have any different views about public access to Whitmore Bog compared with the other areas like Swinley Park? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Um, so unless there's something far above my pay grade, mm -hmm. uh, it's not something that's filtered down to us. Mm -hmm. So um, with the, the new fence line that's come in, oh, well, I say the, the, the reinstatement of it yes. uh, to, a, to a not falling over standard. Mm -hmm. um, it's Whitmore Bog's a funny one because... It's a, it's a really interesting site. Like if, if people haven't gone and had a look around it, it's got so many different areas to it, a little bit of forest, a little bit of, of uh, sort of bogland. And there's some really, really good um, little walks through if you don't, if you wear your wellies, because some bits get, well, it's a bog, so it tends to get a bit like that. Um, but the fence line has sort of helped with, uh, we had some issues with antisocial behavior in there uh, and it made some people feel uneasy. Um, people building camps in the roadies and stuff like that um but that seems to have massively disappeared uh, since the uh, the fence line came in um mm. and there's a lot of dog walkers and stuff that we've been speaking to uh, mm. on our patrols that have said it actually feels a lot better because from some of the wherever the issues were coming from they had to have to go all the way up to uh, mm. the mercedes-benz garage and yeah. i guess it's, it's too far for them yeah. so uh, it seems to have counteracted those issues quite nicely well that's good so so you have no problem with people accessing on bog lane at the mercedes garage uh, no so there's there's the access there and then as you go along uh, i forget the name of it where the industrial estate that's now a housing estate yeah posh houses yeah. you can get in quite easily there as well yeah yeah you just have to cross uh, uh, London Road, but uh, there, there, yes. are, there are ways around that. And then the other question that I had uh, was obviously part of the site is used for, um, I always forget what it's called. Um, Lapland UK. That's it, Lapland UK. Um, last year, I, 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 I identified there was a, still a walking route through to, that was accessible to get you through to Englemere Pond. Is that yep. still, is that actually acceptable public route through? Yes, around the so, back of the house, around the south side of the houses. Yes, so uh, throughout uh, when Lapland UK come forwards and they say, "Oh, this is the site we want to do," and the plans go through, mm. we always make sure that there is some sort of route around. Right. Um, it's uh, if you you couldn't walk through the middle of it no. um, for safety reasons, obviously. Uh, yeah. And there's lots of signs to say there might be a lorry here, there might be stuff like that. But the the workers have been absolutely brilliant with. Um, answering any questions by members of the public, making sure that they keep an eye out for the members of the public, especially with dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and if someone went, oh, I'm a bit lost, they'll point you in the right direction <laughs> to go around. So it's it's basically going around the southern side of the uh, of the site, but there's yeah. clear walking okay. round yeah. routes. Uh, well, that's good to know that it's official because I, I walked through it last year and I thought I wasn't sure that I was supposed to be there or not. <laughs> No, it's 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 difficult, um, especially this year. We have the added bit of southeast water have dug a massive what looks like a pond, uh, right. and left all of the stuff that came out of said pond uh, in the middle of the car park where they normally stack the stuff up. So I think <laughs> that's kind of thrown their minds yeah. a bit. So I think for this week they were saying it's really difficult to um, be able to have their set routes in because they've kind of had to put it along tracks whilst yeah. they bring it across and backwards okay. and forwards. But, but they've still tried to keep yeah. access I and just, make sure can that i just ask has southwest water finished there yet no 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 uh no so they're uh, they're repairing a, a large leak uh, if you've been through the area you would have seen all the water that has come out of yeah. that leak um so they've they've dug a big pit uh, which was about four or five months ago uh and it has remained ever since the ducks are loving it but um us not so much all right yeah i haven't been down there for a couple of months actually but, uh, yeah, no, it's 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 still there in all its glory with a big pile of yeah. what's come out of it. So, yeah, yeah. okay. 
I guess the other question that I had then, sorry to dominate this, is, is, is uh, there used to be some walkers welcome signs. Uh, are they still there as walkers welcome signs and the entrances? Next? Yes, as far as I'm aware, the only one that was removed was uh, where the old timber yard is, where the timber group is now. Right. Um, so yeah. we've stopped people trying to walk down there because... Uh, when one of the tenants water direct moved in, they've got uh, HGVs with articulated lorries. Oh. So as part of a safety concern, we didn't want people walking down there. That's, Obviously, that's, Swindley, that's on Swindley, Swindley Park. Park. That's, that's that's Swindley Park side. Yeah. So as far yeah. as I'm aware, there's no yeah. change to right. walkers welcome signs yeah. anywhere. That's, All gateways still have the same sign. They might have yeah. been refreshed or fallen apart, one of the two. Okay, good. Good. OK. Does anyone else have any questions, comments for Rory on the Crown Estate access? No, just one thing. I've noticed um, over the Swindley Bridge, over the railway bridge on Swindley Road, there seems to be more and more people parking on the laybys that have been created. There, I don't know if you've oh, Whereabouts, the... sorry? When you go oh, over... Oh, outside uh, the, the horse park. box car park bit, yeah. yeah. Um, unfortunately, as it's not our... Um, it's not our land to manage. There's, there's, there's not a lot we can do about it. Um, we also obviously saw a lot more people coming in from uh, a gateway was installed opposite from the the new housing estate. That's so, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, people will cross the road from that. Um, we've put on all our bits. We've put bollards there because we had uh, complaints of people saying, "Well, people are parking there, and I can't see yeah. to come out the car park." Because yeah. you've got the bridge, which is a blind spot on the left, and yeah. the road has a slight curve to the right as you mm. turn out right. And especially with horse boxes and stuff coming out of there, it is sort of an issue. But it's not something that we can actively deal with, unfortunately. No, I didn't. No, it's not your land. It's, it's no, down no, no. the forest. Yeah. OK, thank you. Graham, you've got your hand up. Yeah, thanks. Um, the list of um, sites early on, I was just thinking Crowthorne. Forest is added to that list as well now, isn't it, in terms of taking that over from the Forestry Commission. So the site with the Devil's Highway running through it and the Bridleway, yes. which so is unusual that... for the Crown in terms of having, you now got public rights of way, whereas all the other forestry paths are, are permissive, yeah, so aren't it's, they? It's the first one that's come through. So obviously we took that over from Forestry Commission and the little random bit that's opposite the old forestry commission houses yes um yeah. and the main one from the the, the dive shop through to the underpass mm. um but obviously we haven't changed we, we we didn't we haven't no. changed anything on that mm. and we we've, we've oh, i believe we've kept it to a good standard yeah I can drive yeah. on that <laughs> <laughs> brilliant yeah that's good thanks yeah, so the public rights of way will obviously remain in that part, but uh, the other areas are subject to the other access agreements that keep them open to the public. Yes. Uh, okay, c c can the Three Castles path be made a right of way? Well, or through the subject? Yeah. Yes. Or what, through Swinney Park? Yes. Swinley, Swinley right. Park and Swinley Forest, I guess you're talking about, Richard. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I think due to this historic agreement, it would wouldn't be possible to create new public rights of way in the Crown State land, as far as I'm aware. Um, I that would be a uh, way above my pay grade. <laughs> I mean, I mean the parts are used by permission, which is, and um, the Crown State isn't subject to the Highway Act in the same way as normal land. So I think there's two. Two things again, probably would prevent formation of actual public rights of way that aren't already there through that land for the reason that the public rights of way sort of stop on the Surrey Heath Bracknell boundary. There's some historic agreement, I think, with the Newtown Corporation that would make that impossible. But as long as the Crown Estate remains cooperative and allows use on those permissive paths, then I don't think we've got anything particularly to be concerned about. Um, there was, sorry, there was a specific question relating to the Three Castles path. And apparently there's a section near the Ice House Hill, which has got fallen trees across it on part of the 
promoted route of the three castles path so thinking uh, so when i had a look into that today yeah um because after the after the storm we're still picking pieces up yeah uh, of, of trees and stuff and teams going out to clear stuff so uh, i know the main tracks the the concrete road that goes just to the north of that i think yeah. that has been cleared but this one hasn't okay um for the simple fact that it's it is planning to be yeah. um, but it's not because it's not a regular route that <laughs> any forestry or anything like that drive along it's just it, it slipped off the radar so actually having Fine. it come up in the thing like oh is this being dealt with and i was like oh um right there you go that's <laughs> that's one for the tree surgeons and the forestry to deal with okay. um as i say the the storm hit us so hard that mm. we've been making sure that uh so obviously access is, is a high priority but we also have energy and infrastructure um so um sse uh water board and all these sort of stuff that mm. services were affected during it mm. uh and then even afterwards we were then finding that there was issues where there were trees before and now there wasn't because of the storm and it was affecting yeah. them and so it's making sure that all areas are covered so it's yeah. it's, it's uh, not saying that obviously the access isn't important it's just i think it was sort of we were looking at all, all different aspects yeah it's got to take um, its so, turn yeah yeah it, it's it's just yeah making sure that and it, it is it's always good to have stuff like this because people go oh yeah have you have you thought about that and it's like well it is on the list but where yeah. it was on the list probably yeah. wasn't well, where it should have been so it's it's now been okay bumped up oh brilliant okay thank you so just just you're mentioning the Three Castles path going through there. The other route that goes through the Crown Estate land is the Bracknell Ramblers route that uh, is, I don't know whether you know about it, it's the one that goes all the way around Bracknell Forest area. Uh, and there are a couple of way markers within the Crown Estate land. Do you, do you have any views on whether more weight markers would be acceptable? Um, it's probably... Again, above my pay grade. Um, but, uh, <laughs> no, that's fair enough. I, it's, it just, it's... Uh, I, I walked it earlier this year, and you know, we, you can I can follow the route easily with a map. But if anybody was going without a map, they would uh, they wouldn't couldn't rely on way markers. So from from my point of view, mm -hmm. um, I couldn't see a problem with that. So we did a load of work a couple of years ago with uh, some of the orienteering side of things so a lot of markers had just completely disappeared right. um so uh, not myself but my my colleague uh who's gone over to rural parks uh he went out and uh got all the new markers went and put them out where the original maps were um so that the orienteering teams and people that wanted that was how they had they spent their leisure time um could go and do it uh and he did a lot of work around that so i couldn't see a problem with mm. uh rambler roots and yeah. whatnot becoming more more prominent as it were okay. so rob maybe that's something we can pick up with uh, at some point yeah well, i mean we've got a big well big enough stock of signage and stuff like that so yeah. i can certainly speak to rory or one of your colleagues or whatever and we can see where we yeah. can go with that yeah. yeah i think it just uh, just would help because it's <laughs> It's very, very easy for people without a map to get lost in, uh, in the Crown Estate land. It can be. Uh, sometimes even even when uh, we're doing active forestry, I pull up to an area and I'm like, where am I? Yeah. <laughs> used so, to be a row of trees here. Um, but uh, yeah, so it can become yeah. uh, very disorientating. Yeah. Anyway, if, if you have time, Rob, it might be just something to follow up on. Yeah, no problem. I'll add it to my list. But, yeah, I'm sure you've got a, a very short list of things to do. <laughs> Has anybody got any other questions for Rory whilst he's whilst he's with us on the, on this topic? As I say, if there's any is if there's any questions that yeah. possibly I can't answer, uh, yeah. I know Richard's really keen to to get involved with that, and obviously he's a far higher level than me, yeah. well, uh, so he can probably give a, a, a better answer to stuff. I have to be very uh, boots on the ground and whatnot. So, so well, thank you, thank you for that contribution. There used Richard? to be. There used to be meetings for the uh, users of uh, Swinley Forest uh, at the uh, uh, wherever the centre is. The, uh, lookout. the lookout. The lookout. Yeah. Now the lookout uh, is it going to be that is resurrected. 
I'm not too sure. There was before COVID. I know um, there was uh, there was plans for it, uh, and then it, 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 a COVID uh, decided to rear its ugly head, and uh, everything kind of went to pot. But I believe it is still something that I know. Um, obviously, Richard uh, Everett has taken over in the past, however long, uh, and then through having such a large workload he's only started to get back into things like this forum and stuff like that but i know he's very keen to get local opinions uh, and different user groups and make sure that we're maximizing uh the land that we have and maximizing people's enjoyment of it thank you good okay any other questions comments you're welcome to stay with us for the rest of the meeting, Rory. Uh, oh, I uh, think Jeff's got his hand up there, sorry. Oh, yeah, Jeff. Jeff, you're on mute. Okay, yeah, sorry, just a quick one. When um, Lapland is finished and being reinstated, who should we contact, Bracknell Forest or the park, if there's anything dangerous left there? Uh, so it would was... still be on Crown land, so it would be either through uh, the Crown Estate switchboard number um, or uh, just give the GE Ranger number a call, uh, and one of me or my colleagues will come out and have a nosy. Um, right, they you. should be inspecting it, uh, and we do uh, a post inspection. But there's always the human element. So if there's anything that you uh, your eagle eyes spot that ours don't, uh, do let us know. All oh, right, okay, yeah. There was a lady whose kid um, put their foot down a pipe. There were some pipes that had been left, and uh, she phoned Bretnell Council, and they said you know, contact the Crown Estate. And I, I'm not sure if the lady did, but that was what she was told. Okay, thank you very much indeed. I was going to say, I don't, I don't, I don't remember that, uh, that, that task in hitting my desk, but uh, right. yeah, it'd be something that we'd be, we'd be, we'd be interested in, we'd be concerned about. So uh, yeah, no, just if it's on, if it's on Crown Estate land, just give us a bell and we'll, we'll try and sort it. Good. Okay. Shall we uh, go back to the slides and move on and uh, let Rory take a break from the Inquisition? <laughs> <laughs> Done very well. Yeah, thank you. It was that was really helpful. Uh, so where are we? Uh, still on item four, which uh, okay. So I think Graham, this one's over to you. Yep. Thank you. Um, yeah. So we've got a few um, few following slides. Uh, so yeah, the update on the um, two footpaths across the Royal. County of Berkshire Polo Club. Um, we've made the order finally. Um, so it's currently in its consultation period of uh, six weeks. So notices have gone up on site. There was a notice in the local paper uh, and obviously sent out to all the prescribed organizations, landowners, parish council and so on. Um, so, so far no objections received. So it's looking promising that the council would we'll be able to confirm the order ourselves without having to refer it to the Secretary of State. Um, I did do a quick site inspection and there were a couple of sections of the diverted and or existing path where it's impossible to walk at the moment. So I uh, brought that to the contractor's attention and they did say they would sort it out during the six weeks. So by the time we're ready to confirm the order, We'll do another inspection or probably a week before and just make sure those paths are open. We won't confirm the order until those paths are all usable on the correct routes. So uh, that's our little bit of leverage we've still got. And that's explained in the wording of the order itself. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's positive progress after a bit of a drawn out um, job. So that's the map that's attached to the order and is on site. It follows the route that we established as a temporary diversion uh, while they were working on the, the, the large new polo pitch. Uh, they seem to now be doing a lot of work further north. Um, but they on site, they tell me they're drawing towards the end of the work and they'll be topsoiling and doing the landscaping. But uh, we've heard that before. So <laughs> I don't know how long this is going to go on. Um, but the sections you can't walk next to the letter B, um, at the moment, the temporary fencing and mounding drops down along the curve of the path and then back. 
So you can't carry in a straight line through there at the moment, which obviously affects that length, which we're renumbering as part of um, path 19. And then there's a chunk here, <clears throat> sorry, over here where you come through a gate in a hedgerow and you're meant to be able to go straight on across the hall road, which eventually will go. Um, and then on round the edge of the pitch to this gate, which is a bit hidden due to the levels. Uh, so they need to do a bit of work on that area. Um, but other than that, most of the rest of it is is usable. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we'll get to a permanent solution after a lot of temporary orders and mucking around with fences and threatening obstruction notices and so on. So, well, yeah. Graham, I, I do appreciate your perseverance on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It, it, will be, it will be 20 years since it was uh, more than 20 years since it was first raised. About really? 25, yes, wow. yes, there's an issue. Yeah. Yeah. No, well yeah. done. Brilliant. <laughs> See it Excellent. actually taking shape. Yeah. And, and <laughs> can, can we make use of Rob's large stock of way markers on the oh, roof, well, yeah. please? Uh, yeah, that's a project. Once it's confirmed, we will waymark. Particularly where you can't see where you're heading for in the hedgerows. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think it, all the angles on it. Yeah, it, it's really not going to be obvious that it's a public right of way mm. for people, uh, and uh, particularly as it will take a good while for the maps to be up, the Ordnance Survey maps to be updated. I think uh, yeah. it uh, would be good to just waymark all the angles if if we can get yeah. if we can do that. The big changes of direction, yeah. No, that's yeah. right. So, yeah. um, yes. Yeah. But, but yeah, I would be delighted to not have anything to report to Rob when I inspect that <laughs> path twice a year. Yeah, <laughs> we all would. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's good to see it moving to a conclusion. And thank you for yeah. the whole team who've been working on it. So, yeah, that's that one, unless there's any other questions. Um yeah, then we come to the thorny issue of the uh, signage, which several people have brought up, as well as members of the public and the parish council in Crowthorn, of these signs that appeared earlier this year. Um, not very sympathetic to the uh, countryside setting, areas that people have walked traditionally without challenge, are suddenly being told they're trespassing. Um, it's mainly about liability concerns, I think, that the trust doesn't want to be responsible for twisted ankles and people tripping over roots and so on. Um, so they're using the signage to uh, sort of try and negate their responsibilities. But they're not very subtle. Um, and some of them are on the route of the Three Castles path. So it comes up again on this site. Um, I've put a slide later on under item eight because it fits better with um, claimed rights of way. Uh, under that section. So we'll, I've got maps and so on on that slide further on. Mm -hmm. um, but I have written to a contact at the, uh, the trust to ask about the reasoning and to ask if they considered where there were already promoted paths when they were deciding to put the signs. I haven't had a response yet, but I will keep following that up. Um, so the, the aerial view on the left is, is not a route. It's um, the division between council-owned land on Napier Woods and the edge of the uh, Mental Health Trust land ownership. Um, so everything to the right of that is, is theirs, basically. Um, and the, uh, the footpath that drops down from the new development at Cricketfield Grove down into the Crescent which then gives you access into Crowthorn Village. They own that path all the way down to the end. Right. Um, yeah, so so we are trying to follow it up with the trust. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about it further under item eight in terms of the implications for the Three Castles path as well. Good, okay. Well, thank you for following up with the trust. I think it's, yeah, it, there's a lot of people raise comments about these yeah. ugly notices and threatening notices almost. Mm. <laughs> So uh, uh, anybody got any specific comments about this uh, rather than just talking about the establishing public rights of way, which we'll do in item eight. OK, let's move on to the next one, which Rose, I think, is yours. 
Yes, thanks, Colin. Um, this is just to um, update members um, on the progress we've made. We're producing the new Cabbage Hill and the Cut Route. Um, so um, I think at the last meeting, we um, I sort of said to members, it would be brilliant to have your feedback on the leaflets. Um, and thank you for everyone for all your comments, um, particularly Hugh, who sent me sort of went to the effort of giving me a very detailed, annotated version of the PDF. And that was very, very useful, Hugh. Thank you. Um, right. So we, um, I've incorporated all the comments and made quite a few improvements to the map, um, which I've included on the slide. Um, one of Hugh's suggestions was to provide um, a shortcut, um, which you can probably see um, for the route, which cuts out some of the sort of extended route around the, the woodland area. And um, that's sort of across the um, open grassland, I believe. Um, and we've also added a few more labels um, for the roads um, for sort of reference purposes and um, added in the waterway as well, which wasn't sort of visible before um, the, the Cuts River. So um, this um, is being sort of improved. I've made a few sort of tweaks to the text, which members have um, sort of provided. Um, and uh, the where we are at the moment, um, I produced um, a PDF copy of the leaflets um, in, in discussion with our website team. Um, we're trying to decide the best way to provide the leaflet online so it's most accessible for people. Um, sometimes PDFs can have issues with accessibility. Um, so I had a chat with Colin and Graham about this. I'll catch up before this meeting um, just to determine the best way forward to provide this information to residents. Um, it may be that we I slightly tweak the current leaflet design and just just um, have the map and the text, but just in a slightly different structure, slightly different order. But either way, we're still working at it and hope to get this um, sort of made available to residents soon. Good. Thank you. Hugh, you've got a question. While that slides up on the screen, it's worth perhaps just mentioning that Long Cops, I gather, is now um, a planning application to become a SANG, which is excellent news. Right. Yeah. Okay. Is, is that associated with any particular development? <laughs> yes, the one that's just been turned down on appeal for the third or second or third time at Home Farm, just across the road to the north of the picture. That's what I thought. So I, I, I'd rather assume that long cops would not end up as a sag. Oh, if it's already been put, you know, been put forward. The planning application is in. They may withdraw it, but I don't know that it's been withdrawn. Right. OK. Uh, it's a separate, separate application, <clears throat> but they've just submitted another application for the home farm site within, <laughs> within you know, a week or so of getting the refusal. So... Uh, they don't they don't read the inspector's comments very carefully then do they no he wrote it very <laughs> very obviously please don't waste my time <laughs> <laughs> oh well yeah well I mean, obviously long cops would be a, 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 a significant benefit as a, 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 to the cabbage hill area which is already a fantastic open space yeah. no it's a, it's, a, it's a that was good news to see long cops coming forward yeah Good. OK, well, let's uh, let's hope it actually progresses uh, irrespective of the planning. Lovely. Um, and also to add as well, Colin, I should have explained to, to, to people who are new to the forum that this is um, um, about all about access. Um, so we did previously have three accessible routes publicised on our website, um, but we had to remove these because they were um, sort of out of date um, and um, sort of things had changed on the ground quite a bit. So um, it's an action within our rights of way improvement plan, which we'll come to in a minute, um, to provide some more accessible routes for residents who are in sort of wheelchairs or who have accessibility issues. And this is the first of hopefully um, a few more to come. Yeah. So please, please put your thinking caps on as you're wandering around the borough. If you see any uh, uh, obvious ones, I, I think there's some down in the Sandhurst area that I can think of. That's where I was was thinking of the next one that I had in mind. But uh, it, it, Richard, is, isn't isn't there a path through Long Cops already? No. No, it goes up the side of Long Cops. So, uh, ah, uh, uh, yeah, okay. It depends which you call Long Cops, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, goes go, go, go straight on oh, to get to yeah, uh, the. Yes. Yes. Down Top here, lane. Well, you this can't bit, see my pen. Yes. I'm moving my mark. Yeah, this bit is part of Cabbage Hill, which is a sort of L-shaped toe. 
but the grey bit is is private and is still ah. got a fence around it. Yeah. Well, it says lo- everything south of where it says lo- roughly where it says long cops. Mm, there. Uh, there is a path through it. Yes. Um, down to join the footpath where it's close to where the A of Cabbage Hill is at the lower point. Yeah. yeah. I know I've seen a map somewhere in the past which uh, gave uh, that part a different name. Yeah, uh, Love Lane. <laughs> <laughs> right. If you if you go back to seven, oh, yeah, well, it's a waste of time. But if you go back to seventeen fifty, the path that ran from West End Lane up to Long Cops was called Love Lane. Oh, okay. <laughs> and in the old days, the gate through into Long Cops from Love Lane was still in existence, but it's all gone, all overgrown and disappeared now. Right. Okay. Oh. Anyway, uh, the extension of long cops into the as I, as they sang would be be very welcome. Yeah. Okay. Shall we move on to item five, which is Rose to talk about? I think. Yeah. Thank you, Colin. Um, this is just to um, update members regarding the um, rights of way midterm review. Um, so again, for those people who are new to the forum, just to explain, um, our Rights of Way Improvement Plan is a 10-year document or plan to um, improve um, access to rights of way and uh, recreation routes, because um, at the moment um, it, it's more just than about rights of way, it's also about SANGs, uh, suitable alternative natural green spaces, and any kind of recreation route um, that we're sort of trying to promote, but obviously rights of way is at the heart of this document. Um, so it's a 10-year plan to improve rights away in the borough. Um, the um, first the copy or the second plan for the borough was produced in 2017. And this um, review has taken place halfway through its lifespan. Um, so obviously we've already contacted uh, members for feedback. And thank you for everyone who's fed into this process. Um, sort of, We've had some really good sort of comments, um, which we've incorporated into the review. Um, for example, um, there was... Um, I think it was you, Colin, that raised the fact that we need to be clear in the review that rights of way in Bracknell Forest and um, sort of access to sort of green spaces is already in an excellent state, um, and that what the work we're doing with um, the sort of the the you know, the ROIP delivery of actions is actually um, just improving even further and making it more accessible to even more people. Um, so we just made it clear um, that that you know the the rights away network in the boroughs in, in a good state, uh, good condition, um, and also we've we've had some other feedback about needing to be clear again. I think it was Hugh um, about land ownership. We we've sort of added some more information into the the review to say that um, what landowners' responsibilities are. Um, we go into a lot of detail about what users' responsibilities are, and I think we were missing that element in the ROIP. So when it comes in the next five years to the next um, rights of way big review, we can incorporate all that information we've done as part of this exercise, if that makes sense. Um, So, yes, I think just a few key highlights, um, which you can see in these pie charts in front of you. Um, So the the green is good uh, and the sort of the left hand pie chart. Um, So the number of actions which are either fulfilled or mostly still very much on target for completion um, is very high, uh, over 50%, which is um, sort of good going considering we've been going through a pandemic uh, for the past few years. And the fact that we're still sort of delivering quite a number of actions and sort of on target for completion is really good. Um, Another 33% are on sort of my progress has been made, but um, need to sort of keep on with this to sort of make make the sort of the target at the end of the 10 year lifespan. And then there was only um, sort of 10 percent, um, which were sort of we were sort of failing on and needed to sort of address um, whether or not those were realistic and whether they can be achieved. Um, so, yeah, all in all, sort of good progress is being made. Um, and just on the pie chart on your right, um, just shows you the types of improvements we've been delivering on the ground. And again, um, you know, going through this review, it's it's highlighted to, to many of us, I think, that the, the sheer number of improvements we've been making to rights of way, including uh, removing obstacles to, to you know, removing furniture like styles, which are inaccessible, um, the surface improvements we've been making, um, keeping sort of veg- uh, vegetation clear from rights of way. And um, yeah, basically that the, uh, 35 instances furniture has been improved and 29 
instances where service has been improved um, over the course of the five years. And it may be that there's a few, you know, things that have been missed off that, but that's the, the, the biggest improvements, you know, which we've been monitoring. So, yeah, I think it's just um, testament to, to and, and a lot of this, uh, uh, we've said in the review, a lot of this is down to partnership working. Um, so working with um, the BC, the Bracknell Conservation Volunteers to do underground improvements, um, uh, the, the Ramblers providing some of the funding for the improvements, um, volunteer path inspectors identifying where there needs to be improvements, um, you know, the Rangers doing sort of a lot of the sort of good work. So, yeah, I think it's a real coordinated approach, which we've flagged up as being very important and volunteers as, as being crucial in delivering a lot of this work. Um, so, just, just, just one mm -hmm. thing that just whilst you mentioned the volunteer path inspectors, I became aware recently that we're very unusual as a borough to for the borough to organise path inspections. In in many local authority areas, it's voluntary groups like the Ramblers that organise it, and so uh, I think that's a, another thing that we just need to just be uh, aware of of how well we're supported by the council on this. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Colin. Yeah. Um, just, just to say as well, just to wrap it up, to say that um, this review needs to be completed by the end of 2022. Um, so at the moment, we're in the process of preparing a report, which is going to go towards our uh, to our executive member, um, our, our councillor who makes the decisions, just so we can get this formally adopted, um, uh, pu published online. So that's where we are at the moment, and we should hope to have that done by the end of end of the year. Excellent. Good. Any questions to Rose on the improvement plan? Well, thank you, Rose, for all your continued work on it. I know it's been a lot of effort. It's worth it, though. It, like I said, it, it does sort of highlight, you know, the partnership approach and, and LCAF has been at the heart of a lot of the improvements as well, which has been made clear in the, in the review plan. Good. OK, so no questions I'm seeing. So let's move on to... Item five, which is the definitive maps consolidation and over to Graham. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so this is our other big um, sort of strategic project. This office based project this year um, to produce uh, an up to date version of the definitive map and statement, which is the sort of 10 year anniversary since the previous one was published in 2013. Um, so this will become the new legal hard copy when it's published next early next year. So that's what we're aiming for. Um, so we've been working through the GIS map record, which is kept up to date as things change to um, and that will be used as the basis for the new set of maps to replace the uh, the version that you see on the on the slide. So obviously it'll be the same number of um, individual maps at much bigger scale based on that key map. Um, so we'd like to encourage people to look at the GIS map records that's on the interactive map on the council's public website, particularly in their sort of local area where they're really familiar with where paths run and just see if they notice any discrepancies between the lines on the GIS map and what's happening on the ground, um, because it would be useful to pick those out um, and just see if they're inaccurate, you know, in, uh, mapping inaccuracies or whether they would actually need to be dealt with um, with some kind of modification order um, to, to change the map and or the statement separately. Uh, you occasionally get things which have changed over time, which can make the statement out of date. Um, and it might refer to a, a pub or a restaurant being at the end of the path, which is no longer there. There can be simple things like that. Um, so yeah, we'd like to, if you spot things on the map that are wrong, um, it's on the other side of the road, or it you know doesn't go around the field in the right way, ones you're familiar with nearby, that would be really useful as part of our review. Uh, which we've we've done the sort of in-house bit already. And we're now moving on to checking some of the older orders. Um, one thing, the statement's been lacking. We keep, keep finding we haven't got a record of the widths of the rights of way in the definitive statement. And I 
noticed recently looking up some other things that some of the older Berkshire County modification orders do actually state widths which haven't been transcribed into our statement so there's an exercise to do going through hard copy files just to check if some of those are missing being because they're in older orders they won't actually require us to do a new order we'll just add them as an edit to the statement but they're always useful when things get challenged or people try and move their boundaries out into a into a track or something and and nick some land so uh, yes q's got his hand up yeah well i only say how important that is mm. when field paths get a hedge planted on both sides of them yeah um, as fields have become more private and less agricultural, owners have tended to put a, a, a fence or a hedge or a fence and a hedge down the field side of the path. As, and that makes, after 10 years of growth, the path extremely narrow. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, it increases the maintenance liability as well. Um, yes. Yeah. Very you, end up, you end up relying on the sort of default minimums rather mm -hmm. than... Yeah, the, the statement might say actually it's supposed to be four or five meters wide because there used to be a farm track or mm. whatever. So where we've got those, we'll we'll add them. But that's just yeah. a mechanical so, exercise. So just to, whilst we're just on that, before I go on to Rose, who's got a hand up, but is is, is whose responsibility is it when a a, a farmer puts a, a fence down to enclose the path on a field path? Whose responsibility is it to keep the vegetation cut back? The farmers, the landowners. Yes, the landowner. Yeah, I suspect many of them have no idea that that's what yeah. they have responsibility for, <laughs> and the council picks up the bill. Which Rose. goes back to Rose's point about putting landowner responsibilities in the row. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Rose, you've got your hand up. Yeah, thanks, Colin. Um, just to say, um, if members uh, would find it easier, we could send links um, to your members where you can access a copy of the online map um but also the online definitive statement as well so would that be useful to members for us to send that out uh, yes please yes okay. yes yeah i think i think it would yes okay uh, well we, we can send that out yeah it's great Thank yeah you. and, and uh, there certainly are a few places where the, the path on the ground doesn't follow where uh, it is on the map so uh, one of which is in crown estate land <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we'll come to that one at another time. <laughs> Anybody got any other questions on the definitive map? OK, let's move on to item seven. Uh, right, we're on to, um, sorry, catch up with you. Uh, local pr uh, rights of way and local developments. Um, so uh, this is you, is it, Graham? I think so. Yes, it is. You, uh, yeah. So um, Hedge Lane is a bridleway in Warfield, which runs through two planning application sites, both of which are by Taylor Wimpy. Um, as the number planning application numbers are there, so there's a bigger one for 175 properties and a slightly smaller um, Phase Four one for 46 dwellings. Um, the intention is to retain the bridleway in its current alignment. Um, so I've managed to pull out a couple of maps. Um, so this is an extract from the larger site. So Mays Lane is on the uh, right hand, <coughs> sorry, the right hand side of the screen. Um, this is a site for a, a new primary school. <coughs> Uh, the grey bit is reserved land in case they need a two-form entry with a 10-year limitation on it. So if they don't need two-form entry, that could go to residential at that point. Um, so the red arrow points to the end of Hedge Lane uh, at its junction with Mays Lane. It's retained to the north of what would be school playing fields if this becomes two-form access Uh and it's a bit narrow, but there's already well-established hedges along this section. It's a well-maintained bit of path at this end. Um, unfortunately, uh, they've managed to minimise the number of new road crossings to two across the whole site. So this is one of them. They still need to do some work on the design of that. And we're 
trying to push them to do the same as we did at Avery Lane, where we segregated horses with their own sort of waiting area for crossing from pedestrians and cyclists. So they're not all standing on top of each other while the horses get a bit restless. Um, but they haven't produced that sort of segregated design yet. So we're still pushing for that through the planning consultation process. Um, then it starts to come out into open space. So for this bit, um, this is the, the newer plan. They've moved the play area again. Um, probably into a better position because it was a bit too near the, the primary street down at the bottom before. Um, that's an existing pond, which uh, was a great crested newt breeding ground. So it's got a sort of buffer zone around it of, of landscape and new uh, swales for suds. And then this is a, another new suds pond, retention pond. And that's all in public open space effectively uh, with with houses fronting out onto the open space. So there's natural surveillance. Um, so this section is still well vegetated and yeah, surrounded by open space uh, on the other section. So we've, we're sort of coming down that bit on the other drawing, turning into this smaller application. Um, it's running through with a four meter buffer to to houses, um, some new hedging is proposed. The ditch, which is on the north side, which isn't really functioning very well, um, and this is why there's so much flooding in this area, is because the culvert that heads north and that runs along the back of houses on Old Priory Lane, um, so the site actually drains to the north, is, is not flowing very well, so water just accumulates and that's why the path keeps um, getting waterlogged in this area. Um, so good for drainage, probably a bit of a downside is some loss of existing vegetation just to be able to make this ditch bigger and to function properly. So there's a balancing act there. Um, they're putting some new hedging in as well, um, new tree planting and hedging to try and retain that rural character. But the housing is a bit close. Um, it's better than it was on the previous iteration where they'd almost built up to the edge of the path with garden boundaries. So we've managed to get that four meter buffer back compared to the last version of this. Um, again, the uh, this is the second road crossing, which still needs some design work. They've just put a raised table and not really indicated any segregation of horses and people and cyclists on that one. Um, so, Graham, just a question. Is that, yes. that crossing there presumably is going to further housing development in the land to the north from another developer? Yes, that would be a different developer. So they're having to keep, you know, potential future road links open right. and not have, um, uh, what do you call them? Yeah, not have ransom strips, as it were, mm -hmm. between one development. So, so it's comprehensive master planning of the whole of the mm -hmm. Thomas Lawrence Brickworks site as it was historically um so this is part of the east west greenway which is obviously you know a continuous very long route two and a half kilometers coming from the barclay site in the west right through to westmoreland park in the east eventually so there'll be a continuous um off-road route effectively mm -hmm. so the right-of-way has been incorporated into that um in sort of wet weather and dark times the route will come across priory field and you've got the alternative of dropping down here into the estate roads so you know on a dark winter's evening when it's pouring with rain you probably don't want to you wouldn't feel terribly safe on the bridleway so there are you know alternative routes um with with foot, footways and highways uh through the estate as an alternative when you want to be on a lit route um so yeah the route isn't changing we're trying to keep its character as much as possible but i say there is this balance between achieving better drainage and losing some of the existing vegetation that surrounds it and the, the surface improve would that need improving given the likely increase in traffic um well i don't think it'll change dramatically it might it'll be repaired and improved but it's yes. still a bridleway so there's oh, yeah. a limit to yeah. 
you know, uh, <clears throat> you don't want to put a solid surface on. No, no, no it's not going right. to be a solid surface. It just no. just needs needs to be something that is horse friendly, but uh, yeah, robust yeah. enough to, to to increase to cope with increased traffic. Yeah, I mean, it's it's recycled planings most of it at the moment, and I don't think it'll change dramatically from that. But okay, it will be in better condition, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Richard, is there in any chance you can continue the edge lane across Parry Field? Yes, the, the intention is to create a, a permissive route between the playing fields and the proposed community hub. So that will run across, um, yeah, again, as a traffic free route. Um, and then you'll cross into Larks Hill from there. Yes. There'll be a route through, yeah, Larks Hill which will nip into water splash lane further around and then connect up with everything that's already built at the yeah. Barclay homes end of things. The, the final route eventually will end up going all the way from effectively jocks lane uh, junction area or, uh, of, of Barclay homes all the way through to Westmoreland park. If I remember rightly. Yes. There'll be a new bridge over the cut into Westmoreland park. Yeah. So yeah, right through that Bullbrook section. Um, and into there, so it's a good long connective connecting route. Yeah, traffic free apart from where it crosses roads. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's a, it, it's going to be a useful addition and and to, for people. So uh, you know, it's yeah. whatever people think about the development, having the uh, that continuous route is going to be good. Yeah. Oh, there'll be a, a Pegasus crossing on Newell Green as well, where it emerges and crosses yeah. into Larks Hill. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, the, the other thing I just wanted to say about this before I come to Hugh is that we talked earlier on about having a subgroup looking at planning applications that affected uh, uh, rights away. And this was one I highlighted to Graham as, as yeah. a classic example of the sort where the, uh, the public right of way is right within the middle of a planning uh, area. So, yeah. Yeah. Hugh, you had a comment. I only to say that the road crossings in the Barclay estate um, are working well, I would say, but we don't have horses. <laughs> the, yeah. green, the greenway with us is, is horse free and it's going to complicate the issues of road crossings where you've got horse traffic. Mm. And I think to insist on, on the Avery Lane style of waiting queuing um, is absolutely correct. I'm good. And horses and prams and toddlers and walkers and cyclists don't actually, they don't mix terribly easily when they're all standing in a combined space. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> good. Okay. I think that sounds like a good thing to progress. Okay. I'm going to keep moving us on because otherwise we're going to uh, run out of time. Where have we gone to now? Uh, Graham again? We've gone, yes, sorry, yes, it's me again. Well, this was actually one of the actions that's in the action table uh, was to find out <clears throat> about links from the north into Buckler's Forest um, and connecting with the um, the new Sang in Great Holland's recreation ground. So, um, yeah, from the maps, that th this is um, about 300 metres west of the Golden Retriever pub. There's a planned route in um, into the Sang, so there shouldn't be a route from the footpath behind the Golden Retriever, but this will be a promoted pedestrian entrance uh, into the site uh, mm -hmm. eventually when phase the, well the last re the residential phase five, which is in the sorry I'll use my cursor is in this triangle in here, is just coming is is in as a pre app at the moment. Um, so that will create the uh, landscaping of the 50 meter buffer to nine mile ride, which is all the way through nine mile ride. And then how the open space links into the Sang beyond the end of the residential. Um, is that particular... opposite the entrance into the crematorium? Yes, it's opposite South, uh, South Road. South Road. Yes, yeah, so right. the Krems up there, Beaufort Parks yeah. in there. I think there'll be a new crossing, well, obviously not on the junction, but near the junction um, to assist crossing the road. Okay. I was just going to say the uh, 
the downside the... of that is it's a busy road to cross. Yeah. Uh, but if there is a new crossing there, that would help. But And then obviously, yeah. sub subjects of planning, there's potentially another SANG as part of the Beaufort Park developments. So you'll have the, that and the Great Hollands and Butler's mm -hmm. Forest all linking up together. All right. Okay. And has this been approved by Natural England to have that ex entrance at that end? Because I, when I was talking to the ranger there this morning, he said uh, that Natural England was against having uh, it as it would be uh, giving a route from South Bracknell through into the Triple SI, which seemed an extraordinarily long way around to get into the Triple SI. Well, I think he's talking about the route behind the um, Golden Retriever, uh, yeah, literally in the north east corner right. where people have been breaking through the fence to get from the sang to the footpath mm -hmm. um a, a question was raised could we make it a gateway or have we got to keep repairing the fence but mm. the planning in that area required that there was no connection with the footpath right and some of the cons consultees like the rspb wanted the footpath removed completely but mm. uh, <laughs> we, I thought that I thought that was a red herring because as, we've discovered, in, as yeah. we've discovered in Warfield with all our sangs, if they're not linked by footpaths, they're really useless. The yeah. point is just having individual plugs. Yeah. They need to join up. People make the connections anyway with their yeah, uh, bolt, with their bolt yeah. cutters if necessary. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so is the is the Crown Estate land to the. Uh, east of Forester's Way at that point. Is that a triple SI or is it only the, the bits at uh, Crowthorn Woods? That, it, well, that is part of Crowthorn Woods. Um, no, Crowthorn Woods is, is, is... Oh, no, sorry. South that, that, that area is High Standing there. Hill to the east oh, sorry. of Forester's Way. Yeah, that's, yeah thanks. There's Hut Hill in there and the like, isn't it? But I can't remember whether that's a triple SI, but... I'm trying to find the map on my wall. <laughs> it's all part of the SPA, SPA that that. bit to the east there. Yes. Is it? Oh, okay. It's all so SPA, but I don't know if it's triple SI. It probably I think is, SPA is what matters in terms of the SANG legislation. Hold on, there's a triple SI map outside. Bear with. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Natural England would still has concerns about the adjacency of the SANG to the yeah. SPA. Yeah. Right. Because what, what's con what continues to concern me whilst we wait for this entrance to be put in there is you get lots of people from South uh, Bracknell taking their life in their hands to get across Nine Mile Ride yeah. to get into the Crown Estate land. Mm. Uh, and you know, that road is getting busier and busier and you see people standing on the edges and making dashes to get across Nine Mile Ride. And at some point, somebody's going to get hurt on that. Mm. Um, and I don't know quite what to do about it, but uh, it just, yeah, yeah. Did you get a confirmation of that, Rory? No, uh, there's only the, Wind the Windsor <laughs> Great Park sides with the triple SI on it. Uh, uh, okay, well, the massive map doesn't have it. Rob, Rob's confirmed that it's part of the SPA. So uh, we were just talking about access from South Bracknell across Nine Mile Ride into the, uh, the Swinley Forest area, and it really is something I'm, I'm. I'm desperately concerned that somebody's going to get hurt on nine mile ride before too long uh what uh on to our side or yeah, across sure, to get way. to get across from the housing estates on the north side of nine mile ride to get into swinley forest oh, I got, yeah because there's you know man, there's all sorts of access routes across there but it, it yeah. you take your life your hands camp. On that bit. yeah um yeah caesar's, caesar's camps uh, is always quite an interesting one because of the the rays the corner and uh because yeah. we, we we basically we don't use that gateway. There's a vehicle gate there, but it's yeah, no, I don't think we're gonna use that. Too dangerous. The road was closed. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it, I, anyway, it's just one of those things mm. that I don't know that the forum can do anything about it, but in terms of access to countryside area in uh, in the borough, mm. that is very dangerous access. <laughs> mm. Um but uh, anyway, I just thought I'd I'd uh, just log that one for us to cogitate on. Oops. Sorry, okay. jump too soon. <laughs> Anything else on Buckler's Forest access? Let's move on. Uh, is this Graham again? Or is this me? I think it might be you. I'm not quite. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. I, um, so. mm -hmm. I think we put this in um, 
because this, this relates to the proposed development at Gillett's Hill where a big housing estate is proposed in the local plan, which is still going through the assessment by the uh, examiners. Um, so I don't know quite when we might hear of its output. Um, one of the reasons we put it in is, I don't know whether Graham can highlight it on his screen, but uh, it does create quite a lot of new green spaces around the uh, proposed developments, including down on the southern and eastern side. There's a purple dotted line that Graham's sort of following with his cursor, which is a proposed um, public right of way, public, new public bridle way, which would be actually an excellent addition because it links in across um, the A330 uh, and links into the network of bridleways to the north of the A330. Um, so yeah. I think when we talked about it last time, we weren't sure that we quite understood what was there. Mm. I think the only real point that I wanted to make here is just a reminder that as and when the local plan is approved and if and this is included in the local approved local plan, we really as a local access forum want to engage with the proposed developers on access, not only there, but also the other public rights of way. Um, there's one in particular Hugh will be concerned about, which is the one that is the perimeter path around uh, the Gillett's Hill site. Uh, mm -hmm. Hawthorne Dale Lane, is it called? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, around the edge. Where it, it, it is going to cross busier roads and it will have to have some diversions according to the outline layout uh, mm. again you know it's a busy horse route and we have to make sure that the that it's properly taken into account so uh, yeah um, was was there any particular thing about putting the map to the right on the slide I can't remember what what the point of that one was because that that's the that's from the Ramblers where it was looking at uh, historical paths. Oh, Those, right. The blue the blue pot, dots on there are historical paths that the Ramblers, in their uh, assessment of lost paths, identified where there used to be rights of oh, sorry, there used to be footpaths on maps going back to the beginning of the last century. Wow. <clears throat> Many of them have been diverted. <laughs> or erased or whatever but mm. uh, uh, given that the whole area is likely to be redeveloped at so, uh, or developed at some point then uh, I don't know that there's anything particularly new to to say. Nick did you have any yeah. comments on that? Yeah, uh, yeah the um, certainly um, not that you can see it the one by the telephone box sign on the main road which is the A3095 mm. that's it yeah mm. um, these would be actively encouraged to be maintained mm -hmm. and in the same way where they're trying to do between Priory Road and um, Mays Road include that as a part of the planning for the new estate. Mm. So that and if, if you go down across the road uh, you've got the one that goes down to Warfield yeah. uh, itself that south, southern route mm -hmm. yes that that has gone but mm -hmm. if you're going to redevelop the land itself then why not include it? Yeah, I think there's there's certainly some. If you look at the map on the left, there are uh, there are certainly uh, some of the routes that are suggested will be through the middle of the housing estate and yeah. might be opened up. So we've got the yellow one on the left. Uh, that that yeah. comes down and crosses over the uh, yellow road on the right, or the yeah. minor road on the right, which is yellow, yeah. uh, below Waters mm. Covert. Yeah. Um, and that, that that is ideal to be included, in, yeah. and the road going up um, yeah. could become a part of itself. So yes, I'd be very interested yeah. in in looking at that or maintaining that if possible. Well, I think that that's exactly the sort of thing that, if the development goes ahead, then we we should engage on. Yeah. Um, and so I, yeah. I suspect we're talking about something next year. I don't think we'll hear about the local plan until uh, 
for a little while yet. It's, they've only just had the second round of <coughs> examination. No, the oh. second round's next week, I think, on the 18th. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, three or four so, days. Yeah. But uh, but it is you know, the reason I wanted to, to highlight it and keep this one on our agenda is that there's so many public rights of way in this area <coughs> that will be adjacent to or affected by the uh, development that mm. we really need to engage on it. Anything else that's on that one, Hugh? Well, merely to say be careful because Hawthorne Dale Lane was agreed and uh, with Syngenta officials to replace one of those blue dotted lines. Yes. And I, you know, I think one has to be reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> If you now want all of them, the ones that were put in to replace old ones, um, yeah. I, I think you're being a bit greedy. Yeah, I, I, you're not necessarily wanting to replace all of them, but it, it's just it, this gives you an idea of what the path network used to be like. No, <coughs> it, it, it doesn't, the, 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 because a large, almost twice the distance of the green bridleway wasn't there originally. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I, all, all, yeah, all that's one around the perimeter to the west. So of the it, north. it's wrong to say all those lanes have been lost. All those paths yeah. have been lost. They haven't. They've been altered, and many of them replaced yes. with different ones. I, I mm. think that's that's a fair point, Hugh. I think the, the map was merely highlighting what the routes were on the old maps. Right. But let's move on to. Item eight, claimed rights of way. Um, Graham and Hugh were, have been <laughs> talking about this. We talked about it before we started the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we're at a bit of slight in between stage at the moment. So um, use of this track has been assumed for a long, long time based on the evidence forms we've received. We've had 42, possibly 43 now. Um, <laughs> this, all the, everything's happened this year. Um, some from villagers who've, you know, residents from <clears throat> uh, Haley Green Village who've lived there, sort of man and boy, uh, and used the lane for ages. So we've got a lot more than 20 years claimed by a range of people uh, in combination and individually. Um, so there does seem to be some quite compelling evidence there. Obviously set against that, the landowners don't agree. Um, they claim there's been, ad, you know, contrary signage in place, uh, although very pe few people appear to have noticed that until very recently when the signage was updated uh, with additional private road sign in about 2020. Um, but even taking into account the signage we can see on, for example, uh, the historic Google Street View photographs. Um, so prior to 2014, there isn't any concrete evidence of signage. Although the landowners say there was signage, but um, yeah, we have to take a balanced view on this. Uh, so we think there's enough evidence to go to our director um, for a decision about proceeding with an order after we've received a, an application. Um, I would anticipate the landowners are going to fight it uh, based on letters we're getting them from both of their solicitors at the moment. Uh, uh, so that will end up meaning it goes to the planning and to the Secretary of State and likely to end up in a hearing i imagine so it's not going to be a quick process i don't think you um I, I would like to press again that we investigate what rights the borough got over that track when it bought hunks of Haley greenwood in about 2005 2008 yeah helen tranter bought the hunks of plots in Haley Greenwood for the borough to use as amenity land. And I'm quite sure she was more intelligent than buying the land without access to it. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm sure there is a cross from Westmoreland Park across the track into Haley Green. Well, um, it depends what, what the purchase agreement said was the access, because there was vehicle access there too. Yeah, for maintenance. Yeah. yeah. And that yeah. wouldn't have been across Haley, that wouldn't have been no, across true. Westmoreland Park playing fields. Mm. It would have been along the track. And I think you're missing a you're missing a trick by not investigating what those documents say. Mm. Well, uh, legal are looking into all the deeds and so yeah. on on the land. So um, we're not ignoring that by any means. Good. Uh, and I, I'm prepared to front it up so long as I don't get left with some enormous legal bill when everybody sues me. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and Hugh, I'm 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 happy to help with this if you want to meet up as we talked about well, this I, before we started. I, I, I don't want help with the financial thing. I want a complete, sort of clear statement that the costs are carried by the borough, not by me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Uh, sure. Ellen Tranter is now a trustee of the Ramblers Association. Yes. She's still around. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yes, that's true. I thought I re remembered the name. <laughs> yeah, she's been in touch with me about uh, open access land on Sangs recently. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you might, yeah, if you're still around, it might be worth just asking her view about. Yeah. Get along there. What's her memory of of? Yeah, because she she bought the plots. She was instrumental in in obtaining the, them for the borough. Yeah. Okay. No. Good idea. Okay. okay, any other questions on this one? Okay, so we no doubt keep coming back up in, uh, in, in subsequent meetings. So let's yeah. move on to the next claimed right of way, which touches on what we had discussed previously around the new signage around the Broadmoor estate. And the photograph in the center shows the route of the Three Castles Path, yeah, which uh, yes. apparently has been in existence since 1992, uh, and there is now a sign on it which you can't necessarily read properly, but it does does indicate that you're trespassing by going past that sign, mm. uh, which most people would assume trespassing means that it's illegal to and they, uh, to go past it. Um. And I, I think the question here uh, that's been raised by several people is there must be an awful lot of evidence of continuous use for many years mm. of that stretch. Um, and I think it, uh, there, that it should be possible to put together a reasonable case that this should be a public right of way. Yeah. Um, whether the Broadmoor <laughs> Mental Health Trust uh, would object, don't know. But uh... yeah, I mean, the advantage, well, I can see an advantage, you know, in claiming it is that it's right on the edge of their land ownership. Mm. So literally, the line on the south side of the path is the boundary of Wildmoor Heath. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's not going through their land in the sense that it's going to interfere with what they might do with it very much in the future. So that may be to our benefit. Right. Um, okay, so the, so the land on the left-hand side of the picture, because we're going, looking yeah. looking yeah. west on here, the land on the, the, the south side, that is actually part of, is that the borough's? Uh, no, it's the, B, it's the um, Wildlife Trust bit of Wildmore Heath. Okay. They've, they've put in a... Um, a declaration, depositive statement to prevent new rights of way being formed on their land. So, yeah, I thought for a moment <laughs> an easy solution might be to move it a few metres south right. into Wildmore Heath because it, I mean, it links up with the path um, with my cursor. Mm. The path, you know, the three castle path then turns down that right away anyway mm. in, in Wildmore Heath and then along the bridleway uh, mm. as, as the yellow lines show up there. Right. So it's, it's only the bit between um, South Road and 
that turning that isn't a public right of way. Uh, but yeah. even on the old, really old, old survey maps, it's got FP written next to it. You know, if yeah. you look on a ordnance survey map from the 1950s, it's mm. labelled as a footpath, but for some reason, the parish didn't include it in the surveys for the first definitive map, the East Berkshire mm. definitive map as it was then. So I don't know what the reasoning for that was. Mm. It can't be just a landowner issue because the whole of Path 8 is in trust land anyway. So, yeah, I, I don't know the reasoning for that at all, why it was missed out. Um, Hugh's got, Hugh's got a, his hand up for... Yeah. When the when the Three Castles path was created, it can't possibly have been created without permission for that path to be in place. Well, I got the impression from talking to the David Ram that he's only recently realised it wasn't a public right of way because it was such a well-defined path and it carried on in a straight line from uh, Path 8 or Crowthorn 8, Santos 21 across well, South Road. Yeah. I think he always well, assumed it, it was what? a public right of way. But the landowner must have known it wasn't a public right of way and should have complained or made some comment when well, the yeah, public I mean, created. They've had yeah. 30 years to do so, yes. so that strengthens yeah. the case for claiming the right of way. Uh, <laughs> uh, Probably. Uh, well, I think there's, there is potentially a quite a lot of evidence that could be collected. Um, yeah. I mean, interestingly, the... the uh, Bracknell Rambler's route takes the alternative route around that stretch. So mm. uh, um, there Goes is the South alternative if, if necessary. Yeah. Nick, you've got your hand up. Yes. The, um, I, I've used this path regularly uh, when my wife and I go walking around Broadmoor. Um, and, and this was a, a great shock to me as well. Um, but if you go on the little map to the southwest, Mm -hmm. uh, at the extremity, you've got the path going uh, north-south, up-north, and it stops. Um, no, go go left, or go west, oh, this stop one. there, that one. So that goes up the, goes up to the main ro the road. Uh, however, if you look at the signage at the top coming back down, it says that that is a private, private road, um, uh, in accordance with the uh, 1984, I think, section 51. Uh, mm. But <laughs> the people who are living there uh, walk up and down there because it's the route that they go to the school that's at the top. Um, so I've ignored that sign, to be frank. Uh, but I think that it would be worthwhile uh, challenging it and going forward to see if we can claim it as a, a right of way. So you're talking about what's number number eight on the map, Crowthorn Eight? Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. eighteen isn't it? Yeah. Is it eighteen? Uh, oh, yeah. Eighteen. 18. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't yeah. go. It, it it stops there. So the yeah, right of way discharges you into a private road, which yeah. says it's not a right of way. At, at mm. one end only. It doesn't say it's a private road on both ends. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Interesting. So it doesn't say where it ends either. So um, yeah, <laughs> I'd, I'd I'd ignore it um, mm. and challenge it. So what does the forum think about progressing? getting uh, mm -hmm. at least the some part the, the, the three castles path route looking to see if we can get it designated as a right of a public right of way yes yeah uh, I, I, i'm in favor right yes. okay yeah, yeah. okay I'm, I'm happy for you too but with such a clear <laughs> alternative it might be a, a fight not worth fighting if well i think the first First part is to see whether the health trust would be yeah, yeah. willing yeah. to make it happen without fight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, I, you, as you say, there is an alternative. It's just when it's got it's had that uh, quite a lot of evidence of use because of the published long distance path that goes across it. Mm. So, OK, mm. well, I think. Um, Perhaps we need to progress that one, Graham, off, uh, outside okay. of the meeting, if we can. Yeah. OK. Let's move on so we don't run out of time <laughs> um, to item nine, which is Sangs. And I, I'm OK. No, really. That's Rob. Oh, has a, uh, so, a yeah. Sangman. 
Yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, it's um, we're really just highlighting um, through ongoing SANG improvements, um, a new path through uh, Horseshoe Lake. Um, this one shown in the images here um, is a new public access path through the previously unaccessible uh, grazed open meadow. Um, the pathway now swings round from the car park uh, and links to the existing, thank you, uh, the existing route on the right hand side um, round the back of the um, water sports centre. Um, it provides a much quieter route for people to kind of walk uh, around the back um, backside of the water sports centre, where obviously the frontage can be often very, very busy um, with people using all the kind of water sports, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there's also a link out to uh, the junction of Mill Lane, Lower Sandhurst and Lower Church Roads, um, linking back towards Little Sandhurst, allowing pedestrians for an easier access onto the site um, without having to go down um, Mill Lane and Lower Sandhurst, um, which are sort of busier kind of country lanes without footpaths down the side. So it, it just provides that kind of easier access onto site um, and that quieter route um, around the back of the water sports centre. Good. We're glad to see that's in, that, that's put in place. Uh, and Richard, you were uh, pushing for this one to be put in place, that link from uh, Lower Church Road for, for some time. Yes. That is correct. Yeah, that's good. Um, I mean, we do have on our wish list of, of routes that uh, that's that link and the bridleway around the other side of the lake were going to be put down as put as uh, public rights of way. So they appeared on Northern Survey maps. And I think, Graham, we said we'd wait until the improvement work was done at Horseshoe Lake before doing that. Is, is that a big piece of work to? Uh, to progress that given its council land shouldn't be difficult um i can't think of any reasons why the council corporately would not want it dedicated mm. i don't know the original well i don't know the original reasons why it was set up as a permissive path um yeah I don't think it, uh, I don't know. I don't think it's like the London Road tip where there was a, an operational reason to keep a path permitted so it could be closed, you know, at will. Whereas right. I don't think there's an equivalent reason here. Um, so yeah, it's something we need to, to check on. But as you say, once there's work going ahead, there's a planning application in for the um, car park improvements. Um, and some rearrangements around the what the entrance to the water sports because the, um, the public area. right of way does go across the frontage of the well, that's water yeah that's the right of way right yeah. across parallel to the edge of the lake um so yeah all the activities crossing that all the time going to the edge of the water and yeah. things yeah. going on in these areas uh so this just gives an alternative circular route really in the sang if you don't want to get tangled up in that um, yeah, but yeah, I think Ripoff is still there. Richard's comment was particularly about the safety of moving in, getting in from the lower church road, yeah. and putting that on the Orden survey maps rather than people feeling they had to walk around yeah. on a very narrow road to the car park. Yes, and, and getting this bridleway um, yeah. dedicated as a public bridleway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, it would, I think it would be appreciated if it could be done. It's. Uh, Perhaps you could yeah. just um, report back at the next meeting as to whether it's something that the council mm. would be willing to entertain. Okay, thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on Horseshoe Lake? Silence. Let's move on to Moss End Farm Sang, which is this Rob again? No, Graham? I think it's me. Sorry, yes, it's me again. <laughs> um, I put this in because it's the, um, yeah, of all the sort of new sangs around in Warfield, this is the one that was um, not moving for a long time. It's actually coming towards the end of a three-year planning approval, which will expire in November. So there's a, suddenly a lot of activity trying to discharge a couple of conditions that will 
uh, pre-commencement conditions that will then enable them to uh, put a spade in the ground and start implementing the planning approval. Uh, so they don't want to miss the November deadline and then have to start all over again with a brand new planning application. So yeah, having been very quiet for a long time, it's it's suddenly sort of becoming urgent to sort out the um, it's the construction environmental management plan and um, the detail, the construction detail of the paths. Mm -hmm. So they can start building that and then other conditions can follow after commencement. But it's a big site. That's about 25 hectares. Mm -hmm. So it's equivalent to both Frost Folly 1 and Frost Folly 2 together, which are roughly 12 hectares each. So uh, if you uh, imagine those, that's, those two together, that's a big area of land. Yeah. Uh, how's Frost Folly 2 went to this? Sorry, Richard. There's, there's... Uh, how, how does Frost Folly 2 match into this? It's well, it's just part. over the road, so it's, uh -huh. it's in there. Uh, Frost Folly, that's the Frost Folly 1 car park. Yes. <clears throat> so Frost Folly 1's in there, so the connections are... Yeah, the answer is oh, there are goodness. no connections, and there ought to be. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I think you're right, you. Yeah, well, we've looked at it at Warfield Planning, and I made just those points <laughs> that was years ago. Right. Yeah, I think we were waiting till we, we we were actually responsible for it to then try and make new openings rather than yeah. fiddling it's around crazy, with the existing crazy. planning approval. It's, you know, there's Wellers Lane and you've got lovely open space on both sides, but no path running to connect them. Yeah, mm. and the, the car park for this one is down, and is it West Hatch Lane down there? Yes, sort yeah. West Hatch Lane at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'm I'm very much rely on the council when they take things over to to improve the access to these sangs, where as 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 much as permitted by Natural England, and they mm. they always seem to be just Rather wanting to fit things in isolation. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I always yeah. thought they were alternatives for us walkers, not for the not for the grand nesting birds. Yes. It seems to me they think they're alternative sites for the grand nesting birds, but we think <laughs> they're sites for us. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Is, 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 whilst we're in this area, is there any news of opening of Frost Folly 2? No, we still haven't got a date for that or for Windmill Meadows either. Right. Keep chasing for dates. I think they're having, you know, they're, they haven't, I think yeah. both of them haven't managed to allocate the last. They haven't managed to sell enough of them to yeah. make it worthwhile. Yeah. 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 They're still discouraging notices for Frost Folly 2. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, not, into it. it's not supposed to be open to the public yet. But but I thought <laughs> the the idea was that whoever they've allocated parts to, they couldn't sell their first house until the sang was open. Did I misunderstand that? No, that's correct. You have to have so the... It, it, yeah, and maybe they haven't built. Some, yeah, they can't just wait till they've sold off all the parts. They've got to open the sangs that relate to the housing developments. Haven't yeah, they? yeah. Well, I'm sure the planning policy team wouldn't have missed that <laughs> key well, fact. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll have a word with uh, Simon Cridland in could the you, office. Could you uh, just follow that one up? Because yeah, it, 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 I mean it. It's enormously frustrating for people to see all oh, this open space that's being developed. Uh, and it must be incredibly frustrating for you as the council to see yeah. it uh, going to rack and ruin and uh, oh, yeah. knowing the amount of work that will be required to restore it. Mm. And it it's one of the main talking points on the Moorfield Parish Council. Yeah. You know, we've got all this land being made into sangs and being shut up, you know, yeah. shut off from people. Mm. Presumably, Moss End Farm Sang is also another one where they'll sell off in uh, small chunks. Yeah, well, yes, it'll be sold in manageable bite-sized pieces, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there'll probably be a maximum number that the council would accept. Yeah. Um, so they're not lots of tiny bits of a few oh. hectares, but yeah. Um, yeah. Mm. Well, if you could follow up on whether... With, with, whether there's any potential that these things ought to have been open because if, if the developments are progressing, they, uh, 
they yeah. really need to be uh, be put in place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm conscious of the time moving on. So, any questions? Let's move on to item ten. Um, so, yeah, this one was uh, just reiterating the uh, uh, fact that we there are certain areas where we could do with some uh, extra uh, membership. So please keep an eye open if you can think of anybody who could represent people with uh, accessibility issues. That would really help us. Uh, obviously, we're now uh, grateful to the Crown Estate for joining us. Uh, on meeting, so thank you, Rory and uh, and, and Richard. There, uh, much appreciated. Um, and we also um, perhaps might have missed the boat this uh, last summer for having some uh, uh, activities for the group. We, we 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 have before COVID, we used to have site visits. Um, I think uh, I'd suggested that. Buckler's Forest, now it's moved into council management, might be an interesting one to do, but it would have to be a weekend visit if it's at this time of year, or if you want to do it in an evening like we've done it in the past, it would be uh, um, have to wait until next year. Would be interested in actually having site visits? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yes. I, I would love to go to Butler's Forest or whatever it's called because I don't know that bit at all. Right. It used to be private mm. land when I was walking around. Right. <laughs> Richard said yes, and I think Sue, you said yes. Yeah, I think so. I think it would help bring the group together a bit because we haven't even had meetings in person, so I think it would yeah. be good. And I'm not not quite sure whether we'll ever get back to having evening meetings in person at the moment, given that there'd, there'd be a cost to the council for opening up Times Square in an evening now that yeah. the councillors don't meet there anymore in the evening or rarely do um so would would people be interested in doing it at a weekend yes so yeah. long as it's not a saturday between march and october sorry <laughs> september to march right <laughs> okay so you, sundays <laughs> that's hedge laying time oh right i see what you mean right 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 <laughs> i wondered what the connection was um Maybe I can do Sundays, but not Saturdays. Well, I think it will depend on the availability of the ranger who is in charge yeah. of that. Who is Joe, isn't it? It's it there. It is Joe or myself, Colin. Oh right, um, okay. I work occasional weekends as well, so I can I can poke Joe tomorrow if you like, and I can get some dates that the two of us are working weekends, and maybe right. can take it from there. OK, yeah. well, that, that would be good. Uh, the downside of Buckler's Forest of the weekend is parking is impossible. It's busy. <laughs> um, I think it uh, it really is almost impossible early, to... Why don't we start? Need to... Sorry. Sorry, Sue? Well, I was going to say, normally if you start at sort of 9, 9.30, you're not too bad. I don't know because yeah. I haven't been yeah. there, but yeah. if you do That's an earlier right. start, most people don't yeah. get there. Yes, if, yeah. if you, the earlier Just, you are, then the, the better off you are getting around. Right. Or but if we, we might be able to talk nicely to the contractor and use their compound cup parking, because there'll be less people working at the weekend, I would imagine. So yeah. that might be possible. So yeah. you go in the um, TRL office entrance off Nine Mile Ride. Oh, OK. Um, so that's worth a conversation, yeah. Uh, and the other one is when the hub opens there, there might be more car parking spaces as well. Well, it will along, yeah, the hub and the primary school yeah. road will have quite a lot of parking. Yeah. Which well, take... if, you, if you could follow up on that one, I think there's some enthusiasm, as, a, as Sue said, it bring the team together a bit more, as well as an interesting space which has got lots of access questions that we've brought up in the past and if uh, looking at the environment there and the, the long-term plans for it it's a fascinating place and I can show you what Richard uh, Espley and I were working on today as, 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 as the bee banks that we were creating there <laughs> mm. okay um, any other things on administration Rose have I missed anything 
No, you're on Sorry, the... Colin. Yeah, the, the next slide is about if we can just move on to the next slide very yeah. quickly, just to update members on your annual report. Um, so I've incorporated um, the chairman's forward. Thank you, Colin, yeah. and all your changes. Um, um, I'm due to be making this um, online soon, published online. Um, my request is, um, please can I have um, content you would like to see for the 2022 copy? Because um, it would be good to get that, start drafting that so it's ready um, for publication by the end of the year or at least sort of January 2023. Right. Um, so okay. can we add that as an action, please, yes. uh, members to send um, feedback to me? Mm -hmm. a, a list of all the new sayings, well, all the uh, planned and existing sayings. Yes. I think, you know, people need to know where they are and when they're likely to be open. So an update on the sangs, Hugh. Yeah, I like think that to would be useful. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah I can add that. Thank you. Particularly, uh, as you say, the ones that are in the offing at some point. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. I'll add that. Anything else on that slide? If we just move on to item 12, any other business? Has anybody got anything else that they want to raise? Merely to say I would like a meeting with Graham and yourself, perhaps, about the Hayley Green path and how okay. to push forward on it. Yeah, OK, I'm happy to do that. You yeah. want, you're happy to do it online or do you want to meet in person? Well, I prefer to talk face to face myself, yes. It's up to you, Graham, as to what you can do. Yeah, I mean, I if, yeah, particularly if it's I'm, the day I'm in Bracknell anyway, I can come. Yeah. yeah. I'm over to Warfield or wherever you want to. Well, I'm happy. To, I'm happy to, if you would like to come here. That suits me. <laughs> yeah. This so space. West End Lane. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I'll leave it to you two to suggest the dates, and I'll. Uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try and I'll fit in with Graham. Uh, has anybody else got it? Oh, Jeff. Uh, yeah, this is just for Graham. I just wondered when you um, check out the polo field paths, if yeah. uh, you could let us know, I could join you on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, Love. will do. I, I'd be happy to join you as well, given that I inspect those paths every uh, every, okay. so, every twice. But it, it, it it's not essential that I'm there. But if you if I can fit it in, I it would just be lovely to uh, to see that coming to a conclusion. Yeah, yeah. bring bring uh, your own I, pony. Yeah, I've I've had wet feet <laughs> on those paths far too often. Going above my boots yeah. <laughs> and a packet of mints. <laughs> anything else from anybody uh we haven't got any members of the public joining so i'm assuming there's no public questions right and finally the date of the next meeting is not the 11th of february is it Oh, so I'm looking at the wrong slide set. <laughs> <laughs> the next meeting is 31st of January. <laughs> Sorry. I've got the old slide set down here, which has got right. the wrong date on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, 31st of January next year, uh, we'll meet again. Uh, so, Rory, if you could perhaps pop it in the diary for either you or Richard to join. If yeah, wish. I'll... Uh, if if I'm on shift, I will look to join uh, either way. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm I'm sure Richard's uh, has put down for it. So. Right. Yeah. Did you find this useful sitting through the uh, the, the whole meeting? <laughs> I did actually. It's uh, there's lots of bits that uh, my understanding of uh, how it all works is uh, is it's completely beyond me. But it is quite yeah. interesting to see how other people yeah. uh, look at it. Sometimes it's a bit within our role especially i mean i work with uh uh rob uh occasionally mm. uh but uh <laughs> but uh it's nice to work with other organizations and stuff we're a bit uh because we used to have a lot to do with the forestry commission but obviously they've we've yeah. taken over their their bits uh so we don't work with their rangers anymore so it's kind of right forestry the only ones we uh and the mod but you never find them yeah. so uh yeah. But as you gathered, one of the things that we do look at is interconnections between open spaces. And obviously, uh, you know, the Crown Estate land does connect in with uh, other open spaces, some of which we're allowed to have connections and some of which we're not allowed to have connections. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's always good just have a uh, yeah. like communicating with, with you guys and, and seeing where where certain things fit in. Yeah. Um, 
Mm. It's, it's quite nice. Uh, and especially I've, I've learned about a lot of new sangs and stuff, which is quite, yeah. quite oh, interesting. True. Yeah. And if you have developments or issues that are arising in the Crown Estate land relating to public access, we'd love to hear about them. So Yeah, you know. I'll um I'll speak to, I'll speak to the teams. Um yeah. it'll only be the forest wardens, because uh, obviously yeah. everything else is Great Park. But yeah. Um, yeah, I'll see if there's any issues like that or yeah. comments, concerns, because right. we, we get loads of feedback from uh, from the public yeah. doing our daily duties and stuff. So yeah. Good. Okay. Well, thank you for joining and thank you everyone thank you else. Me. And I'm one minute over. Oh, so... Well done. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> so we'll see you all in January and uh, thank you for all your contributions and uh, goodbye everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Everyone. Colin. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Colin. Bye. Bye. Thank you.